How's it going guys? Today I will show you how I repaired my car remote. Uh, I don't think that a lot of you will use this approach to fix your car remotes, but uh, I thought that this video might be interesting for some of you just to have a better understanding how the car remote works and to see how I did it. Some while ago I accidentally spilled some coke on my car remote and unfortunately it turned out that it has corroded uh, the traces of the circuit board. Due to this reason my car remote was not working anymore. First I tried to fix the problem by soldering an extra wire to go around the corroded uh, trace that I thought that was responsible for this problem. But after that didn't work out I had to find another approach. Because the other car remote that I had was uh, still working properly, the first idea that came into my mind was to buy a programmable uh, replacement car remote, using which I can clone my existing car remote. Of course it was naive to think that it will be so simple. The problem is that car remotes usually has something called rolling code uh, microchips. What this means is that the code that is transmitted to unlock the car is changed each time you press the button. This is why after cloning my existing car remote the new car remote was able to work only once and that's it because the car was expecting a new code. Basically this is what made the clone useless. The next idea that I had was to replace the microchip of the clone with the microchip of my broken car remote. At first this seemed as a good idea but there were few problems. The case of the clone's microchip was the same as the case of the microchip of my old car remote, but the functionality of the pins was different. Second problem was that my old car remote operated on 3 volts, but the clone operated on 12. First I thought that I will be able to work around these problems pretty easily, but uh, after a few failed attempts, I decided that it will be easier to make my own car remote. In reality, it sounds harder than it actually is, because all you need is the microchip from your old car remote, few control buttons, indication LED, 3 volt battery, and the transmitter that you can buy online. The most important thing here is that the microchip is still fully functional. From the serial numbers on the microchip I found its data sheet. Basically the only thing that I was interested to find here was the pin description and the typical circuits. Here you can see that the connection circuit for this microchip is very simple. Here you have the two buttons, one for opening and one for locking the door, an indication LED, battery connections and the pin that goes to the transmitter. This pin sends the code to the transmitter that transmits the code to unlock the car. Once I get my transmitter that I ordered online, I was able to put everything together on a breadboard to test it. Unfortunately I had only one push button, but that was enough to test if this circuit works. Here you can see me unlocking the car with the original car remote that was still working. And here you can see me unlocking the car using the circuit that I created with the microchip from the broken car remote. At last for once everything worked as expected. Now I only have to figure out how to get this into this. One more thing that I won't mention is that in case if you are buying a clone car remote or a transmitter, always make sure that they have the same operation frequency as your car remote. Otherwise, they won't work as expected. So that's it for today. Leave a like if you like this video. And in case if you are interested in the transmitter that uh, I used in my project, I will leave a li link down below. Uh, actually, it comes also with a receiver, so if you are fooling around with Arduino projects or something similar, you can use this to create your own wireless communication circuit. See you in my next video.